Hello everyone, Top Hat Waffle here once again to continue working on our Counter-Strike Global Offensive competitive level. Today we'll be adding lighting to our level and configuring the various lighting entities that we have at our disposal. Like always, we start out by loading the CSGO SDK and then hammer World Editor from there. We're inside the Metro map today. Before we start creating our light environment to add sun to our level, I wanted to remind everyone about the VRAD compiler. This is the compiler that computes lighting for our level. We don't need to do too much to it, just make sure that when you compile your level, you're using the full compile HDR only preset for Counter-Strike Global Offensive. This is the preset that you have to use to get proper lighting. Throughout this tutorial, there will be lots of updates to lighting and I've cut the compile time out. To see lighting changes in game, you have to recompile the entire level. There's no way around that. This is just due to how compiling a level works. And we'll start by adding the sunlight into our map. The sunlight is cast from our light environment entity, which is the little happy sun guy here. We previously added this in, but just used mostly default settings just so we could see what we're doing in our level. You're only allowed to have one light environment in your map. Having more may cause issues down the line, so just make sure you only have one in your map. If we open the object properties on here, we see that I just have a direction set and a pitch. Everything else is the default. I want to choose the angle that my sun is going to be cast at first. I've already decided that I want the sun to be cast down from my camera looking at this tree. This will leverage some of my future plans in the metro to have some skylights down here. My favorite way to choose the sun angle is to select my light environment and then press Ctrl X to move it to my clipboard. Once it's there, I'll position it up in my skybox about where I want my sun to be cast from. From here, I position my camera in front of it. I look down where I want the sun rays to be cast. I open the object properties for the light environment by pressing Alt Enter, and under Pitch Yaw Roll, I'll click Point At. This will turn my cursor into this crosshair, which will allow me to set the Pitch Yaw and Roll of the selected entity at whatever I'm looking at. So if I click here, it'll set the rotation and the pitch for me. Once that's done, we can put the light environment anywhere. The light environment is what I would refer to as a global entity. This means it affects the entire level on a global scale, and they typically don't have any relevance of positioning in your map, meaning they can be put wherever you want. For organizational purposes, I'll move this over into T-Spawn, and I'll keep all of the global entities that I create over here near this. Lastly, let's choose our color. Opening its object properties again, we have the brightness setting. If we choose pick color, I want to give it a slightly yellowish tint, and then click OK. This color readout is RGB and then the intensity of the light. The default is 200. Let's take a look at a few different intensities that we can use in our map. This is at 200, which is the default, and now 400, 600, and 800. The intensity value is essentially the amount of light that the entity will emit. Before we go any further, there's one thing that I want to touch on with lighting in Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Counter-Strike Global Offensive is meant to always be run in HDR only mode, no LDR. What this means is that the brightness value that we set under brightness will automatically be used for brightness HDR. Never when you're working with lights should you change the brightness HDR, the HDR scale, or the ambient or ambient scale for HDR. Changing any of these values may cause lighting glitches or artifacts inside of your level. If you look at the edge of shadows that are cast in this image, this is what happens if you change any of these values. The last setting that I want to take a look at is ambient. Ambient is referred to as natural or diffuse light. It's a very subtle effect. The best way to show how it works is to set it to an obnoxious color just so you can see what's happening. I'll also crank up the intensity. As you can see, the entire area is pretty much red. This is most notable in the shadows over on the right side near the forklift. This is what natural or diffuse light does. It almost has a presence everywhere in the level. For a more realistic effect, we usually set this to a bluish color that will be less intense than most other colors. This is slightly blue, and I want its intensity to be 40. Now with that slightly bluish purple, low intensity ambient light, this looks much nicer than it did with the red and with just the white ambient light. 
While the darker ambient shadow can provide more of a moody feel to your level, Counter-Strike Global Offensive is a competitive game where visibility is important. I've tweaked the intensity on my ambient setting along with a bit of the colors to get a better lighting effect to fit competitive gameplay. If we turn around and look where the light should be coming from, there's nothing there. The light environment is only the entity that physically casts the light into the map. We still have to add the entity that puts the sprite in the sky. The entity that puts the sprite in the sky is an NV Sun. If we select our light environment and just shift drag it over, open its object properties and we change its class to an NV Sun, since we've shift dragged this entity from our light environment, it retains the pitch yaw role. This is beneficial to us since we don't have to set these now. We then have size of the sun. I'll set this to 24. And then if we turn on use angles, yes, hit apply. If we look up at where the sun should be now, it's there. And as we look directly at it, frying our brains, it gets bigger and smaller. Let's move on to creating a regular point light inside of a room. Inside my mid to b connector, let's add a prop static that will be a light bulb model. I've decided to use light bulb 01A. And then I can place that on my ceiling. This light model may be a little bit too small for the amount of light this room would require, but it's going to serve us well for the purposes of teaching lighting. I'll shift drag copy this down just so I don't have to place a new entity and change its class to just light. As soon as we hit apply, we get the small light bulb sprite. Let's go ahead and position that underneath the light bulb in the model. Much like the settings with the light environment, we have brightness, brightness HDR, and HDR scale. Again, never touch HDR settings on lights as it will cause the lighting glitch that we saw before. One more thing that we should know before we touch lighting entities is the appearance, custom appearance, and name need to remain default. You cannot set appearances to your light in Counter-Strike Global Offensive. It causes lighting glitches like you would not believe. If you name a light or set appearances on a light, these are some of the artifacts that you'll begin to see in your level. We have a black patch of nothingness on the ground, and this entire area inside is completely black. Let's go on to setting up a few basic parameters on our light. First, let's pick the color. Just like the outside, most lights will have a slight yellow tint to them. No light in your level is ever purely white. Now that that has a slight yellow tint to it, I'll turn the brightness up to about 250. That's most of the basic options that you'll set for a light. We'll visit some of these later in part two when we do more advanced lighting. One thing to keep in mind when creating lights for your level is the placement of the light entity from the light model or ceiling. This light is rather close to the ceiling, and it has a pretty strong glow that HDR actually isn't helping too much. Let's pull this light entity a little bit more away from the ceiling so we can see what effect that has inside of the game. With the light entity moved further away from the light model and the ceiling, the glow effect is much less harsh. It also looks much better in my opinion. Now let's take a look at the light spot entity. This entity is meant to mimic a spotlight. I'll place a new entity and change it into a prop static. From there, I'll choose floodlight. And this is the model I want to use. We'll notice that inside it's off. If we look under skins, some lights have multiple skins. This one has an on setting on skin one. So we'll just select skin one and click apply. I'll quickly position the floodlight, and once it's in place, I'll make a shift drag copy of it and change its class to Light Spot. The Light Spot will have a small spotlight model, and when it's selected, it will have a cone to show you its inner and outer fading angles. Let's plop this into place quickly by just giving it a little bit of rotation to match up with the floodlight model. You'll also want to take care to make sure that the light is not inside of the prop. If the light is inside of the prop, the prop will absorb all the light and it will look very bad. If that ever happens, you just kind of pull the light forward until it's outside of the prop. Let's give it some color using the brightness setting. Once again, I'll go with the ever so inspired orange tint. And since this is a floodlight, its brightness is going to be a little bit brighter. So I'll set it to 550. The light spot has three settings that differ from the regular point light. 
While the regular point light does cast in omnidirections, this is a focused light and we can choose inner, outer, and the focus on the target. With the default inner, outer, and focus settings, this is what our light spot looks like in game. Let's increase the focus from one to 20 so we can see how that affects the light. This is the default light spot for comparison. This is how the light looks with 20 focus in game. We can see that the edges of the light are much harsher with this setting turned up. Now let's set the focus back down to one and increase the outer fading angle. As we turn the outer fading angle up, the outer cone will in fact get wider. Let's see what that looks like. With the outer fading angle set to 80, the spotlight casts a much wider light on the entire level. But behind us, not much light is being cast at all. Let's set that back to 45 and set the inner bright angle to a very tight number around 10. We see that this gets a much more closed up angle on the inside. With the outer angle set back to 45 and the inner angle set to a small number like 10, the light is much softer than it was previously. We can play with all three of these settings on the light spot entity to achieve any number of lighting effects with this entity. It's very versatile and you'll find yourself using it quite often. The light settings that I think I want to use for this floodlight will be an outer angle of 55, an inner bright angle of 30, and a focus of five. After I set those settings, I'll shift drag it over since this model has room for two light emitters. And once that's in place, let's see what it looks like. For only spending about 20 seconds configuring those lights, I think this is a pretty good turnout for a floodlight. Lighting, much like the layout in your level, will be a lot of adjusting. You'll set the settings what you think will work at first, and then you'll end up changing them gradually over time to fine tune them. Another handy command to know when you're working with lights is R draw lights one. This will allow you to visualize the cones where lights are projecting inside of your level in game. When working with lighting, a function instance is a very valuable tool that you can leverage to make creating and editing lighting in your level much easier. A function instance is essentially a reference to another map file inside of your level. To see how this works, let's select this light. This consists of two light spots and the model. Let's cut it and remove it from the level and open a new map file. We'll paste it and put it in the center of this empty level. Sometimes when you have multiple light spots selected, their cones will turn purple. This is just because you have many things selected. If you individually go onto them and check the brightness, they'll work fine. Let's save this VMF file, and we want to save it in a folder called instances, which is in the same location as our map file. We'll save this as a new VMF, and then close out of it. We can place a new entity and make it a function instance. We'll choose VMF file name, and choose floodlight. If you select the file and it doesn't load the instance, you can manually type in the file path instead, which is a relative path from the VMF location. After you do that, it should flash by and load the instance. We now have this object with a slight shade over it when it's selected. You can choose the instancing view up here under the instance menu. By default, it may show as tinted, which will put a haze over it even when it's not selected. I use show normal. We can now copy this light to multiple locations. Since it's an instance, if we decide halfway down the road, we don't like how this light looks, we can double click on this instance and click edit instance. Let's say just for some odd reason, I want a third light spot sitting on top of this light. If I save the VMF and then close out of it, we can see that all of these instances have updated to contain the third light spot. Since that third light spot is actually quite silly, let's delete it and resave. And once again, we'll see that that update has happened throughout the entire level. This is very useful if you're going to be placing the same type of light around your map in many locations. If you decide you need to go back and update something, it saves you a whole bunch of time instead of going back and fixing each light individually.
I hope you enjoyed this look at how to create basic lighting inside of your CSGO level. We'll continue working on lighting over the next two episodes as there's quite a lot to cover in the realm of lighting. Thank you very much for watching. We really appreciate it. Hope to see you again tomorrow for the next one.